Hello! I hope you're well. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, and welcome to my February reading vlog. It is very early in the morning, <laughs> and this is me in all my unfiltered glory. I have been awake from pretty early, even for me, considering I'm a morning person. I woke up around five and started reading, and it's just before seven now, so I've started to hear people in my house moving about and waking up, so I'm not completely alone. So I guess since this is a reading vlog, I should probably fill you in on what I've been reading. So first is Inheritors by Asako Shir Shirazawa, and I'm really enjoying this so far. It's a series of interconnected stories about five generations of this Japanese family, and the structure reminds me a lot of Homegoing by Ya Jesse. So that is has been really promising about it. I would say that there's some form of organized chaos with the order of the stories, but it's not necessarily chronological or even based on a particular branch of the family that you're following, so that has made it <laughs> a bit like a jigsaw puzzle, but thankfully there is a nifty um, family tree up front that not only shows you how people are related to one another, but shows you which story they're featured in, and also tells you around what time the story is supposed to be taking place. So I've been referring to that quite a bit um, just to kind of help me get a sense of who and when certain things are happening and that has been really helpful as I said. I'm really interested and have been flagging things but the recurring theme of identity keeps coming up in a number of stories like there's elderly woman who's losing her identity because of dementia, there's someone who learns about his eternity or maternity in that case, um, there's someone who describes themselves as a nobody and things like that. So I've been kind of flagging those moments with blue flags because that is really intriguing to me. So that's where I am there. The other book that I'm reading right now is actually The Street by Anne Petrie, um, which was recommended to me by Marie Luke. So hi, Marie. Um, the hold that I had on it came through really quickly. At one point it was saying three weeks. And so I got that and I've been listening to it on the Libby app and really enjoying it. First impressions, it is a lot longer <laughs> than I anticipated. I figured like a 200 or 250 or 300 page book and it's more like 400, 450. So it's a good 12, 13 hour long audiobook. But as I said, I am enjoying it quite a bit. It is about this single mother living in Harlem during the 1940s and kind of follows her as she's trying to create a home and provide a decent life for her son, Bub. Um, and it's just, the writing is so descriptive and I'm particularly enjoying how inside Ludie's head you're getting but you're also starting to see Ludie as a character kind of come through. There's this weird moment where Benjamin Franklin is mentioned, which I'm still trying to figure out. I'm guessing it pops up more than once, um, because if it doesn't, it would be very random. But basically, Ludie has currently learned that money does not buy happiness, and also that white women see black women as threats because they're convinced that all black women want to sleep with their husbands. It's been really, really interesting just from a 
kind of outsider looking in standpoint because I don't know if I would call it stream of consciousness with Ludi, but you are very much in her head while she's kind of coming to these conclusions about various things. So that's basically where things are. <laughs> I will check in with you guys later. Bye! Checking in, it's just after one in the afternoon, and I've had an actually pretty productive morning. I did my laundry, I cleaned the bathroom, I did a thorough clean of my bedroom, and on an impulse decided to switch the books on my bookcases. But yeah, let's talk stuff that you're actually interested in. So I did my daily tarot draw for the day and got the Ace of Pentacles, which is this card that's sort of about stability and prosperity and new beginnings and that sort of thing. So feeling very motivated, which is probably why I got through as much as I did this morning, so can't complain there. So during the morning while I was doing all of the cleaning and being productive and all of that, I listened to more of the street. I'm now just over 50% done with the book, so I read another like 25%. I'm really enjoying it, but I would not say that it is a particularly uplifting book, at least at this point. There are characters other than Ludi whose minds you sort of get into that, that are really interesting. The ones that I'm thinking of are Jones, her superintendent, who is a creep. Like, really, really a creep. I don't know if I mentioned it so far. So you've been in his head, you've also been in this character Min's head, and she's coming across to me as this foil of Ludi. Like, Ludi is very proactive, very much a planner. She's always thinking about what she can do to better her situation. And Min, who is Jones's girlfriend, is not that type of person. She's usually letting things just happen to her, and when she does actually do something here, it's more reactive rather than proactive, and I would say Ludi is the proactive one. So it's interesting seeing the two of those characters as foils of one another, but I think one of the things that I'm still trying to like figure out is the different types of men and women in this book, and I'm honestly not seeing a male character who's kind of portrayed in this positive light, but basically all the men that we've seen at this point have been libertines or criminals or drunkards or individuals who can't hold down jobs like they or some sort of combination of all of those things and I mean the women aren't necessarily portrayed in a great light either Ludi is definitely the sort of paragon among among them. Otherwise, it's a lot of women who are using sex to better their position, or they are women working as like housekeepers and domestic servants, and so they're drudging away, taking care of someone else's family, and then coming home and breaking their backs to take care of their own families, and Ludi is very opposed to being either of them. She wants to be better than that. So really, really interesting. I'm really enjoying it. I find the writing really stunning. So I do want to listen to a bit more of it today, maybe. I am really thirsty and really hungry, though, so I'm going to go do that now. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye! It's my
Monday lunchtime and I'm checking in for a reading update since I didn't film one this morning. I'm hoping I look like less of a hot mess today than I did in my last clip. Anywho, I did draw a tarot card this morning and I got the tower in reverse and I always think that the tower is the most terrifying card in the entire deck so that was not a nice way to start my day. I asked the cards would today be a good day and the cards responded LMAO denial is not just a river in Egypt. <laughs> um, I knew going into today that it was not gonna be great. We're down two members of my team. I'm also opening one of our awards programs which means that I'm usually frantic the entire day trying to tie up loose ends. So I knew going into it that it wasn't going to be great and the tower is the card of chaos and in reverse is all about denial. So and there you have it. As for reading updates, I did read a little bit more of Inheritors this morning. I got through another three of the short stories in this novel um, and they were really good by and large. There was one that taught me something about the history of World War II that I wasn't aware of. It's about Ping Fang, which is apparently this covert um, center where the Japanese were doing biological and chemical warfare testing on human subjects. I knew none of that, so I was blown away by it. Um, this I'd say that story started out a little bit slow for me. I didn't know where it was going. But by the end of it, I was, I was interested and general, genuinely moved by it. There was another story that was probably my least favorite section in the book so far, and it was a sincere it's not you, it's me moment because it had a lot of military history and military movement type feel to it and in historical fiction and even non-fiction that's just not my cup of tea and I'm still marking identity I ran out of blue flags but now I'm using green and I would say the this new section with Luna had a lot to do with identity not just on a personal or individual level but also kind of looking at on a national or ethnic level too and I really enjoyed that. I only have 60 or 70 pages left of this so I anticipate that I will finish it in the morning and since that's happening I'm already contemplating what to read next. I think I'm gonna read The Witches of St. Petersburg because I'm in a Russian mood. The better question is when am I not in a Russian mood but that book is also on my winter TBR which I'm doing abysmally at and also my Historathon Readathon TBR so I definitely want to cross it off and I also listened to about an hour of the street this morning which I'm so glad to be reading this book because it just keeps getting better and better in the like hour hour and a half I read there is quite a lot going on. It's pretty action-packed with Ludi and other characters. You get the backstory for Mrs. Hedges and it is so moving in certain ways because she's a character that I now have some sympathy for where prior to this I was kind of indifferent bordering on having, having negative feelings about her so to be able to do that is like great and then also Boots. Boots is like the star of the show for this section of the book because he has the most brutally honest sort of speech about what it is like to be a black man in a white man's world and he delivers it in such a way and is so angry about the unfairness of things that it really hit me in the feels and was just A++++. plus 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 plus. So suffice it to say I'm super eager to dive right back into it. I would listen to it during work but I don't think that I am doing anything admin -y enough where I can kind of tune out from work and listen to an audiobook and still get work stuff done. 
so I think I might try to listen to an hour after work if all else fails. It's due in four days and I definitely want to finish it by then. But yeah, so that's where we stand with things. I have a bowl of soup over there getting cold, so I'm going to go eat and log back into work and I will check in a bit later. Bye! Hello! Checking in again. It's 6 p.m. ish and I just called it a day with work because to be honest today was chaos and I just need to rid myself of it. I did two fairly naughty things. I stress ate about a tray of homemade cornbread and that's only slightly hyperbolic and then I've done this thing. Hold on, I'll show you. This is kind of a janky little setup, admittedly, but I figured I'd show you what was in my shopping cart from bookshop.org since I am stress buying books. <laughs> I think I have five books in my cart currently. The first is The Doctor's Blackwell and then also A Swim in a Pond in the Rain, which both of these were in my most anticipated releases video for nonfiction, so I'm super excited about those. I also have Red Rosa, which is a graphic novel. Um, this is a bit of a wild card for me, but I really, really enjoyed the Hannah Arendt graphic novel biography, so I'm trying to see if that was a fluke or not, and this one has been in my like wish list type thing for a while, so I'm finally just gonna bite the bullet and order it. Then we have Three Novels of New York by Edith Wharton. It's a collection of three of her novels, which I don't think I actually own any of, surprisingly, but I saw this on Sarah's Instagram like yesterday and thought the cover was stunning and was just like, I must have you. So in the cart it went. And then lastly, Sophia Tolstoy, a biography by Alexandra Popoff. So yeah, that's what I'm doing when I'm stressed, ordering books. The Sophia Tolstoy biography is a complete impulse buy. I watched The Last Station again last night. I've seen it a million times at this point, and that movie makes me so weepy all of the time. The acting is phenomenal. Um, it's really a love story of Leo Tolstoy and his wife Sophia, and I was probably a little bit more weepy last night because Christopher Plummer passed away and he is Leo Tolstoy and is brilliant in the role and I'm very attached to Captain Von Trapp from my childhood. This particular biography happens to be written by an author that I'm familiar with. I read her other book, The Wives, I think it was called, a number of years ago, and it's on the wives of these Russian literary giants and their influence on their careers. And she was also a client of the agency that I worked at. So I am intrigued, didn't know she'd actually written a Sophia Tolstoy biography, so I'm going to be interested in reading that. I do have the Sophia Tolstoy diaries that I'm still working through, but it's been kind of put on the back burner, primarily because I keep reading three or four books at the same time. So yeah, I need to get on that one, but I figured a biography would be a good compromise in the meantime. I did actually get to listen to a little bit more of The Street by Anne Petrie once my brain turned off from work and I just ended up doing admin stuff. I will have to say Boots has some serious rage when it comes to white people and white men in particular, and given how black people are being treated in the 40s, I can't say it's unfounded or really all that surprising. I think what is, what strikes a chord though is that there are these, these refrains or these phrases that he keeps repeating almost like a chorus when it comes to his interactions with white people just in general where he's being called boy or they're using a racial or they're using a racial slur or he's saying yes sir no sir and so that 
really left an impression on me. That's where we stand there. As for this afternoon or evening, I guess, I don't really have all that many things planned. I will eat dinner and then I will probably put on a movie. Not gonna lie, it might be The Last Station again because I'm that serial rewatcher. Um, and those feels I'm here for right now. I'm just in that sort of mood and frame of mind. So yeah, that's where I'll leave it for this evening and I'll chat with you in the morning. Bye. <laughs>
where we stand with things. I have technically 20 minutes before I need to log in for work, so I'm probably just going to listen to a podcast or mindlessly flick through the TV channels. Basically something that doesn't require any brain functionality. <laughs> and I will check in with you guys later. I checking in again and it's like six in the evening. I literally just finished listening to the audiobook for the street and that ending shook me. I was not expecting it and I'm still like in processing mode. Like I don't, my mind is just blown. I don't, I can't string words together and I really just need someone else to read this book ASAP Rocky so they ha have someone to talk to and share my thoughts and just wow I really loved this book. I feel like I'm not going to be able to give a coherent review of it right now because my mind is still shook. It was just great. I loved the characters. Um, I loved the way that the social commentary was woven into it. I think some of the strongest passages for me were in this last little bit that I've listened to today. I, I listened to like two and a half, three hours of it, so it's not a small chunk of the book, but I, like some of the commentary that the characters espouse was just stunning. And so I think I spoke about how Boots had this moment where he talks about what it is like to be a black man in a white man's world and sort of vents his rage and frustration with the system. And you now have Ludi do something very similar from the perspective of a black woman. And it was just heartbreaking because there's this moment where a white man is making advances towards her and it's solely because she's a black woman that he feels entitled to it and she makes this comparison of what slave masters and overseers did to their slaves and that was just profound because this book is set nearly a hundred years later and it hasn't changed all that much and so that was really striking and you also had this moment too, which was very telling, but also very random. I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, there's literally this section where Bub's teacher appears and you're in her head and she's narrating and she's talking about what it's like to be a white woman teaching a bunch of black children and working in Harlem. And it just goes to highlight the sort of racism and the horrible way that some white people viewed black Americans at the time. She compares them to animals, she talks about it being a jungle, and it just is rife with all of these horrible stereotypes. And it was really a powerful section but also I have no idea where this character came from. She literally slips in to say these things and then slips right back out and I don't think she's ever mentioned again. Or at least I don't recall her being mentioned again. But yeah, I mean, it's just wild. This book was so good. I am so in awe of it and hopefully I will be able to kind of put together coherent thoughts for my February wrap-up. So yeah, I finished I finished two books today, Inheritors and The Street. I think I mentioned already my plan is to start reading The Witches of St. Petersburg next, but I think I'll also start listening to the audiobook for Gingerbread by Helen Oyeyemi. I had planned to listen to the audiobook for Outlander, but it has like a hold line of like 40-50 people to the point that the Libby app won't even estimate how long it's gonna be for you to get hold of that book. So that's a no for now. But I'm also supposed to be getting The Hate You Give any day now according to the app. So we'll see. So at least for the 
next little bit my plan is to read those two books but anyway I think I'm gonna end the vlog here even though I think it's only covering like three days but I know I rambled on for quite a bit <laughs> for day one of this vlog so it's probably long anyway but I really do hope you enjoyed it and thank you so much for watching if you did enjoy it be sure to give it thumbs up comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!